The flame season is starting to truly unwind, but we are going to kick the tires on some ideas for their summer. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Nick Zararis. Nick, how are you doing today? Um, pretty good. It's nice out. That, it's amazing what the sun can do for your morale. Yes, and hopefully once the sun starts shining in Calgary a little bit more, things might uh, brighten up there. But today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Today, we are going to uh, look at the first layer of the Flames current situation in terms of roster construction and or roster composition rather and kind of what the summer might look like and if we're going to be seeing more of uh, you know the vast turnover that we've seen so far this season or who might be sticking around so make sure you're sticking around and subscribe to Locked on Flames wherever you're getting your podcasts and on YouTube we are here for you Monday through Friday five days a week your team every day. We know that this team uh, is kind of like a, a melting pot of draft picks, trades, not so much waiver claims, but a, l- a little bit of everything. Yeah, and, and that's why I think it's interesting when we start to take a step back and unpack everything from just a pure, what a, what do we know about the roster? What can we tell about a team based on how players are acquired and how much they're cost, how old they are when they're acquired? And I think, you know, you can learn a lot about the Flames predicament based on a lot of just simple facts. You know, I, I wrote down some things here. Their average age on opening night this year was 28 and a half, which was upper tier. That's a little on the old side, but not that old. You know, I, I want to say that was 12th out of all the teams coming into the league at the start of the season. Since the trade deadline, they're down to 27.75 is their average age. So a little bit closer to the younger side of things, which, you know, makes sense. They traded away a lot of guys who were pending UFAs. You don't get to become. UFA until you're 27 or you've played not eight uh, eight years in the league. So it would make sense that the ages, but I think the thing that really tells you a lot about this group is the, the majority of this team is trades, free agencies, and waiver guys. You know, you traded for Huberto, you got him when he was 29. You traded for Kuzmenko when he was 27. Sharon Govich when he was 25. Dryden Hunt, 27. Miramanov, 26. Uyghur, 28. Vladar, 23 on the younger side. Blake Coleman, 29. Markstrom, 30. Walker Dewar, 23. Kevin Rooney, 28. And Dennis Gilbert, 25. You know, when you're getting guys in free agency and trading for them, those are generally going to be guys on the older and more expensive side. Yeah, and I feel like we've talked about that a lot this season in terms of, you know, where you can kind of pinpoint the pieces that you might need to um, bring in on the fly. And if you're looking to speed this rebuild, retool situation up, um, but you can't really do that with some of these contracts, like the Huberto contract, like the Kadri contract. And that's uh, a little bit detrimental to this moving forward. But there are rotating pieces like, uh, you know, Dryden Hunt, I'm pretty sure his contract's up this summer, AJ Greer, a lot of those like bottom six guys that you can just kind of rotate in and out. You know, it's generally healthy, you know, uh, even if you win the Stanley Cup, you know, you're generally going to turn over a spot or two and you're starting 18, whether it's a fo- at least one forward or a defenseman, just because generally it's hard to keep guys, especially if you're a successful team or if you're a really right. bad team. If you're in the middle, it's not as hard, but if you're really bad or you're really good, it's generally kind of hard to keep people. So thinking about it abstractly and you think about the teams that are relatively successful across the league. 
the, the secret is not picking in the top five of the draft. It's not signing guys in free agency. The key is getting guys who provide more value than what you're paying for them. And I, that's true of every salary cap sport. I don't think that's exactly a secret. Y- you think about some of the contracts on some of these teams when they've got on and won championships, you know, other than Vegas, Vegas is a bit of an outlier as an expansion team, but Colorado, multiple guys, dramatic. I mean, Nathan McKinnon was making six and a half million dollars. And the year after that, it went up to 15, you know, the, the lightnings extended both Vasilevsky and Braden point during those windows where they went back to back. So mm-hmm. excess value is the key and the easiest place to find excess value is in the draft and you find that excess value typically at the top of the draft because that's where the best prospects are going to be the issue is the flames are not going to be picking at the top of the draft no and i don't know if there is a realistic scenario where they ever truly pick at like okay let's say like the top three spot that is something we're going to talk about in the third segment of the show because when I tell you I think I need a law degree to understand the conditions on the draft picks between Sean Monahan and the Kachuk trade, like I had to read like three separate articles to explain how it works. And I'm going to be reading them on the podcast verbatim because I'm still not entirely sure. I understand how the conditions work, but I know one of the conditions in there is if the Flames are picking in the top 10, the pick moves to the following year and there's a non-zero chance the Flames are picking in the top 10 this year and next year. So it, it's convoluted, but it's not impossible, especially being that they have additional picks i know we Mm -hmm. don't see the trade up in hockey as much as we do in football or the nba where teams they see a guy falling and they're going to go up and get him but the flames do have copia we talk about that a lot where in the acquisition stage of getting all these draft picks and these prospects about if a player becomes available and you really want them you know you have your bundle of assets same thing you know if you're there on the floor of the draft and a guy you really like is falling and you got a bundle you know a two or three and your first to get up five, six spots in front of teams. You got to do it. You know, you only yeah. have so many opportunities to get impactful talent. Yeah. And uh young impactful talent. Yes. I think that that's kind of a big key here um, for the flames moving forward, because I wouldn't say it's impossible to get older because I mean, we did see a decrease in age, but um, it would be very nice to see them kind of, Uh, make more steps in that getting younger process but um anything else before we take a quick break and move on you see the direct correlation in the nhl because of the way the salaries are set up you know you can't make a good amount of money unless you're a superstar coming out of that first Mm -hmm. contract you know like teams will take care of you you know if you're kale mccarr you're adam fox quinn hughes otherwise you get you get railroaded you know you get to 25 26 and you got to hold out those last two rfa years to get to ufa and at that point you know you've played probably half of the hockey you're going to play in your life and you've made dramatically less than you're worth i mean i make fun of barkley goudreau robbing the rangers blind for 3.6 million a year for seven years but his career earnings at that point were like 11 million dollars you know he doubled his career earnings in one contract so for a lot of guys especially role players especially bottom six guys they got to get to that unrestricted free agency and they got to get the best contract they possibly can Yes, and that's the fun part of July 1st, which we will be approaching in a little over three months, four months rather. Um, So coming up next, we are going to um, talk about what might the Flames roster look like. We're going to go through the list like we did yesterday in terms of who's going to be here, who may be on the trading block or just gone. But first, we are going to take a quick break, and I'm going to talk to you about Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. 
This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter 1, 2024, validated by Radius Global market research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the start. Uh, from the date of the first 3% match, must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfer is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC and member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Thanks everyone for tuning into today's episode of Locked On Flames. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're getting your podcasts and on YouTube because we are here to carry you through the rest of the season as well as the off season. And then we'll kick it back up in October in full gear. But the Flames, um, just like every other team, have decisions to make. Yes. Uh, (laughs) I mean, this is something that every team goes through. Um, It's really an interesting time, I would say, for the Flames organization because you do have to make some tough decisions. And we saw that already with trading guys like Chris Tanev and Noah Hannafin. All right. So to keep this concise and keep this moving, very straightforward. I have the lineup from last night's game pulled up. You tell me yes or no. Okay. Okay. If they will be on the opening night roster next season. Okay. Jonathan Huberto. Yes. Agreed. No, doesn't matter much of a discussion. <laughs> Same thing with Kadri. I think yeah. I think their immovable contract need that veteran type during this transitionary period. I think Huberto and Kadri are here almost the full duration of both of those contracts. I would say so. Martin Pospisil. Yes. I would agree with you. He is 24, 24 and he's under contract for two more years before he becomes an RFA with arbitration rights. He will definitely be on the roster because he's cheap and he's good. Yep. Yes. Andrew Mangiapane. Potentially. I will say he will start this season with the Flames. Yes. Next year will be the final year of his current contract, and then he will be 28 years old by the end of next season, unrestricted free agent. I think he almost certainly will be a deadline sell-off. He will be one of, if not the single most valuable forwards available at next year's trade deadline because he won't be expensive because he only makes 5.8 and the Flames can retain up to half of that. If you can get Manjapani at 2.9, if you're, you know, a Leafs, a Bruins, a Panthers, you do that every time. So I, I would agree with you. Michael Backlund. Yeah. I agree. I I don't think they would trade. I don't think they would trade him within a year of naming him captain. I think like we said yesterday, I think there's a good chance they try and ride through the rest of this contract with him, with Kadri, with Huberdeau as kind of the the old guys in the room so that these ch- the children that come in are not led totally astray. That's fair. Blake Coleman. Yes. Yes, I would agree with you as well. I think the year after, I think it becomes a more tenable situation to consider mm-hmm. trading him uh dryden hunt who you mentioned i believe is an unrestricted free agent after this year no yeah he, no no he's got one more year after this year oh. I, just, I have cap friendly up so he makes he makes 700 grand a year um i'm pretty sure he can go back through to the ahl so i'm sure they'll probably keep him yeah. being that, that he's cheap uh sharon govich yeah i would say so him and Kuzmenko, I put in the same box of if they can work out something a little more medium term, that'll get mm-hmm. them both to unrestricted free agency. I, I I think they probably keep them till then. And then they do, you know, in the walk year, they decide, OK, we're ready to compete. Let's extend them or we're going to trade them because we're not ready to compete yet. So I would agree with you. Definitely. Kuzmenko was next. So same exact point. They're both one more year and then conversation uh Greer and Rooney I think uh Rooney signed an extension so Rooney will probably be here Greer no and then Coronado yes yeah um I would say Greer is more than likely I mean I hate calling him like that annual January uh July 1st guy but I feel like he is consistently a name you'll see yeah for free open in UFA 
He fills out the bo- he is a he fills out the bottom of the roster. I mean, there's a reason he mm-hmm. was on waivers. There's a reason the Bruins tried to sneak him through waivers to keep him. You yeah. know, as so I, I think there's a good chance there. Um, Oliver Chillington. Yes, I would agree with you. I think they will work something out there where even if it's only one year, I think they they've liked what they've seen. But before they commit, they want to be sure, I think. Definitely. And I don't I think that they're also trying to play it fair and not yes. just be like, OK, well, you're back. We're just going to take you out now. Yeah. Uh, Rasmus Anderson. I would say so. Yeah, he's two years away from RFA. So maybe if they're really stinky next year, that's a conversation we're having around the deadline about trading him. So teams get two deadlines out of him as opposed to two playoff runs as opposed to one. Mm -hmm. But I think he definitely will start the season on the Flames roster next year. Mackenzie Weger. Uh, Yes, without a doubt. Same thing as Kadri and Huberto. The contract is not movable and they're probably more likely than not going to turn over a couple more spots on that D. So having some continuity matters. Um, Mm -hmm. Miramanov? Yes. Yeah. They signed him to an extension as soon as they got him. So I think they they had a plan for him. Bill Hanley? No. Yeah. I, I would agree with you. I think that'll be a spot for a kid. Other, uh, And I think they have guys they're a little more trustworthy. They like more for that sixth mm-hmm. or seventh D role than a guy they got from Dallas off of waivers. Definitely. Okay. Braden Pahl. I, I've been saying that wrong. I went and looked up the pronunciation because I wasn't sure. Braden Pahl. Um, he's a maybe, I feel like. I feel like they might keep him around um but also i could understand if they didn't i mean he's an undrafted free agent he's 24 i yeah he's 24 he makes no money um i could see him being a he'll be i see him as he will be on the preseason roster Mm -hmm. and he may or may not make the team and he may or may not get sent and to the ahl depending on what they do around him yeah, I would say that's um, a fair assessment. Um, instead of starting with Markstrom, Vodar. <laughs> no. Uh, see, that's interesting. So do you think that's tied to Markstrom or is that separate that you think no on Vodar? Um, I just think that he might have a different vision for himself in a different organization where they're not going to ride the hot goalie as often. He's 26. He is two years away from, yeah, this year and next season until he's a UFA. I I agree with you. I think he's going to want an opportunity to not get, he doesn't need to be a starter, but get more starts than he's currently getting so that by the time he reaches UFA, he has um, a resume to be like, hey, I, I need to make this money and this is why I should make this money. And then Markstrom. Oh. I don't know. I I feel like this is truly going to be something that we just have to keep an eye on all summer because uh, especially I would say around the draft even because I don't I'm not taking him being traded completely off the table, but I also don't know if it's something ownership even is going to flirt with again. I think how this season ends will dictate a lot of that because I think if they really stink it up down the stretch here and they pick in the top 10 and, you know, we talk about Manjapani and Anderson next year, not implausible. I could definitely see Markstrom getting trade. Connor's airy, yes. Yeah. And then for for the purposes of the conversation and we have a minute to kill left in this segment, uh, Pelletier, no. will he be on the opening night roster? No. I I don't know. I don't think so. I think that he really uh, missing this time due to his shoulder injury really was detrimental to how his first year was supposed to go. So it's really going to depend on how he finishes, assuming he finishes the season with the Wranglers and, and and the playoff run. Hunter Brustowitz. No. I would agree with you on both of those counts. I think both of those guys are probably a year away. And then 
I was going to ask about Samuel Hanzik, but it feels like he's probably one more year of college hockey before we can seriously start to entertain the idea of him being on the NHL roster. Yeah, and when they drafted him, it was kind of like a, hey, he's probably at least two or three years away. Um, And he's had, if I remember correctly, he had an injury early in the season as well, but he's bounced back pretty well. Um, So I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, let's speed it up because he rushing anyone de- anyone's development is not good especially not on a team that's not going to win anything but i, I digress i yeah. digress <laughs> exactly like if you have the pieces around it to kind of uh support and boost him and kind of carry him a little bit sure um but we don't we don't need to do any of that right now But coming up next, we are going to talk about uh, more of the roster construction and kind of how other teams are really doing it because the Flames have quite some lessons to learn. But first, we are going to take a quick break and talk to you about an app that you yourself might enjoy. We are past the halfway point in the season, Flames fans, and... I hope you are all ready for a nice long six months without Flames hockey. Regardless of where the Flames finish the season, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports and especially Daily Fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like McKinnon, McDavid, or Crosby will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Flames fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That is code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us today on Locked on Flames. Hope you're hanging out and enjoying uh, your fine Tuesday or whenever you're listening to this. Uh, make sure you're following us on the app formerly known as Twitter, at Jess Belmosto and at Nick Zararis. What do the Flames do? How? Okay. What are these draft picks? What are these conditions? Okay, so I'm going to read this for, because it is very confusing, so stick with me. All right. The, the Flames receive Florida's 2025, so next year – that first round pick, as long as the Panthers pick for this year that was sent to the Flyers for Claude Giroux two years ago, is not in the top 10. So as long as Florida is not in the top 10 of the draft next year, the Flames will be getting Florida's draft pick next year. So that, okay, the Panthers should be good next year. So more likely than not, they should be getting that draft pick. If that happens, if Florida for some reason is awful next year, Calgary received the first round pick in 2026. So two years from now, if Florida is really bad next year, Montreal receives Calgary's pick next year, next year, as long as the flames don't pick first overall. Okay. So these are very convoluted, but the moral of the story, if the flames pick and the Panthers pick are both outside of the top 10, the Canadians get whichever one is better. So whichever one has a higher pick slot, that's the one that would go to the Canadians for sh- taking Sean Monahan's contract. So it is not impossible that the Flames kind of mess themselves up by trading to get rid of Sean Monahan, but more likely than not, they're going to have at, they're going to have four first round picks over the next two years. That that is the rough math based on the odds. It might not be for until two years from now that they have four first round picks, but more likely than not, yes, they will pick twice for in the first round next year. So overall, they have at least one this year, most likely two first round picks. Next year, they have one 
And then the year after that, they have two. They have two second round picks this year. They have one in each of the following two years. And then the third round, they have two third rounders this year, one next year, and then two the year after that. So they've got some volume. You know, they've got the 10 ish draft picks you would like over the first three rounds. That's your foundation. And then those extra ones, those this is where you're going to make your money. We, we've talked about it mm-hmm. a lot the last week and a half or so. How this goes is ultimately going to come down to how well the Flames draft. And do we have faith in their scouting department? Um, it's a great question. Because I, this is not a knock on their recent draft picks, but... They haven't hit home runs the same way other teams that have even picked even later have so, have been able to do. It's a fair point. You know, this year's draft, the, this past year, you know, you're not going to take anything away from that. Last year's draft, they only had three picks and they had to rescind the rights to one of those. So they only had two guys they drafted in two years ago's draft. None of those guys probably going to make the league three draft. One to the third draft to go. Coronado is probably going to be end up being an NHL regular. Other than that, no locks. Uh, four years ago, Connor Zary, he's a player. Other than that, nobody in that draft has got significant NHL PT. Four, five years ago, Peltier and Dustin Wolf, okay. Before that, Martin Pospisil, that's really the only guy. Before that. Valamaki and Ruzichka, neither of which are still with the team. Kachuk, Adam Fox, Matthew Phillips. You know. What a trio. Yeah, it's we're talking about you know you're gonna need to hit at least two draft picks in each of the next three drafts. They don't all need to be stars, but they need to be NHL caliber players. You need to hit at least two. And being that you have extras, you don't really have an excuse. You know, every team right. has starts with seven, but if you have 11 or 12 and you can't hit on two out of 12, then that's a reflection <laughs> on you and your scouting staff. Yeah. They're going to have a lot of uh, people to answer to if that is the case, because I mean, the odds are kind of in your favor. And if you yes. can't, at least figure something out then you you really need to start hopefully finding different scouts because i this is just that has real potential to be bad yeah man it it's going to be complicated but uh the other thing i wanted to touch on here i uh i pulled up spo track because this is also um interesting so going into next going into this summer on july 1st the flames are expected to have about 20.9 million in cap space that is based okay. on the current cap ceiling we don't know what the cap ceiling is going to be next year there is room for it to be probably in the ballpark of 89 million that's what i'm gonna guess 88 and a half to somewhere in the ballpark from 88 to 90 million if everything goes well you know if the league gets like an oilers rangers cup final maybe it's 90 91 million you know if you get the the tv darlings then maybe you can sell a little more advertising that type of thing but more likely than not we're going to be in the ballpark of 88 89 million dollars to operate from they don't have anybody who's due a real raise this upcoming summer chillington made two and a half on his current contract maybe they keep it around that same number i wouldn't be surprised if it was less than that frankly you know if it was two as opposed to two and a half so they don't have any huge money commitments set to kick in they traded away three guys making significant money they may or may not trade away markstrom who's making a good chunk of money so then you know we're talking about close to 25 26 million if they trade markstrom and they retain some salary so they're gonna have room this summer to add guys the issue is you're not gonna be particularly good next year So you don't really want to go out and spend a ton in free agency. You know, there are names there. You know, you pull up the list of who's available and it becomes really interesting. You know, Steven Stamkos is there. Sam Reinhardt is there. Jake Gensel is there. Adam Henrique, Tyler Bertuzzi, Tavo Teravainen, Jakob Silverberg, Brady Shea, Alec Martinez, Jonathan Marchessault, Vladimir Tarasenko. There are a lot of interesting names there that, you know, on a two or three year thing, you know, if the Flames sign Vladimir Tarasenko for three years at four and a half, five million a year, 
as to be a stopgap play in the top six to give the young guys kind of what he was supposed to do in Ottawa. You know, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Throwing the max contract at Sam Reinhart that he's going to command because he's going to have one of the best walk years in the history of the NHL, that mm-hmm. doesn't make a lot of sense for a rebuilding team. So the opportunity for the Flames to get themselves in trouble is there this offseason. It is, but this also feels like one of the more intriguing lists, I would say, over the yes. last like two summers. Um, so that's going to be really uh, a fun day well really just the morning because someone's just gonna leak everything beforehand um but i i'm always looking forward to the summer but i feel like the flames are going to have a fun summer and give us hopefully plenty to talk about but is there anything else you would like to add before we move on today no, uh, we got about a month of hockey left. Enjoy it while you can. And then, you know, watch the playoffs, root on the Oilers downfall and have fun. Yes. Uh, pick a fun team to root for and someone you won't feel bad rooting for. Uh, but make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. We are here for you five days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, and we will be back tomorrow with who knows. The Flames keep us on our toes every day, and that's the fun part of covering the Flames. So we will see you tomorrow.